Hey, welcome back to Sports Rehab Experts. Today we're going to be talking about Ajgen Slaughter's diagnosis. Diagnosis for knee pain oftentimes occurs for those who are adolescents getting involved in sports. They're growing, develop some knee pain. They go to the doctor, say they have Ajgen Slaughter's disease, and there's nothing you can do about it. Except just wear a strap over top of your knee because that'll solve all your problems. Before we get into talking about Ajgen Slaughter's diagnosis, in my opinion, on this diagnosis, be sure to like, subscribe to the channel if you find it useful. Be sure to also hit that notification, that bell button, so you get notified anytime new videos come out. All right, so Ajgen Slaughter's very common diagnosis that gets handed out just like candy to any adolescent kid who walks into a doctor's door who has knee pain. Very overdiagnosed problem. When in fact, this isn't really a pathology at all. This is just the normal aging process. So you'll get two camps of this individual when it's diagnosed. You'll get the camp of, there's nothing you can do about it. This is just because you're growing. And, uh, you know, these are just pain, growing pains. How many times have you heard that before? Growing pains. Yes, I realize that's probably a very common occurrence for kids who are growing. I grew up at one time too. I was diagnosed with Ajgen Slaughter's as well. I was told it's just growing pains. There's nothing you can do about it. It's just the fact that you're getting older, you're getting taller, you're growing, and you're going to have these growing pains. There's nothing you can do about it. So don't worry about it. Just keep doing what you're doing, and eventually it'll go away as you age. And then you wind up still having Ajgen Slaughter's pain or growing pains when you're fully growing in high school or in college uh, because you never addressed the issue in the first place. Other times you get recommended this nice strap that goes over top of the knee. Wear this thing, this really uncomfortable thing that feels very awkward when you're playing basketball or playing sports. It doesn't really stay on that well, um, and somehow it's supposed to help your knee pain out. Nice thought. Sure, the pressure of it kind of distributes the force and the workload of the tendon a little bit better, so it might be a little bit comfortable. But again, it doesn't solve any problems. It just puts a band-aid on it. It doesn't fix anything. It doesn't fix growing pains. So I'm putting this video out to help change the whole mindset behind the Ajgen Slaughter's syndrome or the Ajgen Slaughter's pathology diagnosis and get rid of it pretty much altogether because, again, it's very overutilized. It's the normal process of an individual getting older and growing. So why do we need to put a disease label on it or a pathology or an injury label on it? What we need to do instead is look at why is this occurring, what is happening as you age, what are the ramifications of that as it relates to your patellar tendon? Because that's really what the issue is, is a loading problem to the patellar tendon because you are growing, your long bones are getting longer, meaning your tendon has to keep up that rate of elongation, meaning now we have extra range of motion that we need to have strength and capacity developed for within that tendon. But that isn't going to happen at the same rate unless you are actually training the tendon. So it's a probably a good idea to do a lot of these things before you ever even get a diagnosis of Ajgen Slaughter's um, because this is going to help an individual as they start to grow to maintain the tendon integrity as their long bones start to become longer and their tendons start to become longer that the tendon capacity keeps up with that rate of growth as opposed to waiting until you have a lot of knee pain or going to the doctor and getting this diagnosis. Maybe we should be a little bit more proactive about doing the right things to avoid this in the very first place. You could make the argument that a lot of this comes down to doing the right things in gym class for kids as they get older. Um, but that's a, that's a different argument for a different day, talking about gym class and the lack thereof of an emphasis on physical education these days in kids. Either way, regardless though, there's a lot of active kids who do have knee pain and who do get diagnosed with it. And this is because you have this perfect storm of a lot of sports being played, a lot of different types of sports being played, sometimes playing multiple sports at once. I see people all the time who are running track and playing basketball leagues or who are playing baseball and running track. I was a culprit of that for a bit of time in my life, playing for multiple teams, going to different practices for multiple different teams of the same sport. I was a culprit of that growing up, 
play different basketball travel teams and then you go play with your and then you go play with the school team you know playing on multiple different teams having multiple different practices getting a lot of volume of activity in in a short period of time during which time you are growing getting taller tendon is losing its capacity through length because it's not building that capacity at the same rate that you are growing. So if we think about how to address this, it's simply just working backwards from where, where the problem ever started. Person is getting taller, we need to develop tendon capacity through long range positions because that's where the tendon is weakest. Be Side note, this is also why kids tend to tighten up as they uh, go through a growth spurt is because the tendon doesn't feel confident enough or doesn't have the capacity enough to be able to withstand these extreme range positions to be able to confidently and comfortably load these extreme range positions so the body just kind of naturally tenses up tightens up and guards up because it doesn't have the confidence to have the capacity to load in some of these outer ranges of motion so that's why you'll oftentimes notice kids when they go through a growth spurt, they'll also seem a lot less mobile, and that's because the body, from a protective mechanism, is going to try to protect those tendons by tensing and creating tone and tension around those tendons and not allowing it to display its full movement capability and display its full elongation capability because it's not comfortably loaded through that range of motion. So ultimately, our solution to this problem is get strength in the patellar tendon through length. Now, depending on the symptoms that you currently have, how acute this issue is, how flared up this issue is, you might not be able to start with a maximally lengthening or eccentric based exercise. You might have to start somewhere else that is currently comfortable for you to be able to load this tendon progressively. So in today's video, I'm going to give you a five step process to go from the easiest level to the most advanced level to ultimately make your tendons more resilient and throw away this diagnosis of osgen slaughter syndrome and get back into playing sports successfully and in a pain-free manner, overcome this problem, or never even have to deal with this problem in the first place because you're doing the right thing from the start if you're going to be involved in sports and athletic lifestyles. All right, so the big thing you need to understand with any type of tendon injury is that, again, Tendon injury tends to be most irritable in the long range position. So what we can do is work short range positions, more concentric based activities, things where we're pushing, pushing the knee into a straightened position and shortening the range of motion up to a, to a degree that is currently comfortable for you, only taking yourself through a range of motion that is non-painful and always working through a non-painful position. So going through short range concentric based activities is often a great entry point of loading for most tendons, including patellar tendon issues and Ajgen slaughters. What this might look like would be something simple as backwards walking, backwards walking up a hill, a treadmill, or pulling a sled backwards. Could also look like a very modified range of motion, knee extension with a band. Potentially, if we're talking about extremely sensitive tendons, we might have to start isometrically with this knee extension or isometrically with things such as a wall sit. The very first starting point is isometrics. Second point is your short range concentric based activities. Third level is getting into a modified range, so short range to middle range, but with an isotonic exercise. So this means we're gonna do the concentric portion of the lift. We're gonna have that amortization phase. We're gonna have that eccentric phase of the lift. Um, and we're gonna progressively load this into heavier and heavier weights. But again, load is always dependent on comfort and pain. We're not pushing through pain, either from a range of motion standpoint or from a load standpoint, as well as from a repetition and volume standpoint too. So things such as a forward tap down or a lateral tap down off of the box are a nice way to expose the body through a modified short to mid range of motion, both isotonically and progressively loaded with heavier and heavier weights. After this point in time, then we're going to get to a full range of motion or really emphasizing those end ranges, the point of real eccentric elongation of that tendon. This could be looking at things such as stretching that would be the lowest level of tension applied in the end range but furthermore we can take eccentrics out into this position one exercise that is great for that is a reverse nordic reverse nordic takes the knee and the patellar tendon through a maximally lengthened position and does so under a progressive load in a load that you can alter or modify or scale depending on your current capabilities 
And then finally after that, then we're talking about some plyometrics. Now there's a spectrum of plyometric options that you have at your disposal. Generally speaking, the first phase of a plyometric is going to be sticking a landing. So stepping off of a box and landing on two feet or one feet, controlling that landing and being able to absorb that force quickly. So more of that eccentric and amortization phase, control over that amortization phase. So more of that eccentric based emphasis through a range of motion. So more of that eccentric basis. Um, then getting into things such as pogo hops. This exercise has a little bit more of an amortization phase emphasis. We can reduce the load by either reducing how high you jump or attaching a band to a squat rack and perform with two feet or one feet to reduce the load and get work on quickly applying force, absorbing force, and redirecting force. And then eventually get away from the band and do it completely without any type of resistance through full load. And then finally after that get to something like an actual depth jump where we're working on shock training overloading that tendon, getting it acclimated to these extreme amount of forces that it's going to be exposed to in sport. You need to have that exposure done in a safe manner so that when that exposure comes to you in life or in the, the game of basketball, football, whatever sport you may play, that you have the capability to withstand that force without problems ensuing. All right, so there you have it. It's a five-step process. You need to follow through all five of those steps you might progress at any particular rate um, through all five of those phases, depending on your current capabilities, your current pain level, a lot of different factors. And that's where having a coach comes in super handy to help guide you through those phases. Also, there's a lot of nuance involved with those five phases, a lot of sets and reps concepts, a lot of different tweaks you can make to the exercise. And that's where having a coach can become extremely useful. So if you need a coach, head on over to sportsrehabexpert.com. Um, and we have some different programs for you. You can also email me directly at greg at sportsrehabexpert.com. And we have a variety of different ways of helping you online and helping you progress through these five phases and help get you back into playing sports in a pain-free manner.